This conference will now be recorded. And we have discussed completely about abstract classes and there is one thing which I would like to quickly walk through this just to make sure you are clear with the, the purpose of abstract classes. See, actually we don't use that much too much of abstract classes in uh, Scala, like how we, we prefer in Java, how we do in Java. Here we don't depend too much on abstract classes. More than abstract classes, we prefer to use sprites. sprites. What is the trite mean, sir? Trite is similar to abstract classes, but the difference is it's more like a Java interface, a Java interface. If you don't have an idea, you can ignore that point. There's nothing to worry about it. Okay. So now the point is, uh, then where should we apply these abstract classes? What are the situations where we need abstract classes? That is one thing we just need to quickly discuss today. Then I will switch to the clear now. So that's it. Now, one minute. Uh, Sorry, this this WhatsApp uh, this thing. Now, if you see here, well, where do you need we exactly apply this abstract classes? And if you see here, this uh, Scala people is telling clearly what is that? Uh, abstract classes are similar to abstract classes in Java, but, but because sprites are so powerful, if you see this, you rarely need to use abstract classes. This point is clearly discussed just a minute before. Because these are powerful, so we dependent on what on, on this uh, abstract class. That is one thing. Sorry, we depend on uh, rights. And here, where should we apply abstract classes? It's clearly saying here in the document. You want to create a base class that requires constructor arguments. We have done that yesterday. You remember, right? Declaring parameterized constructor with abstract class. In that situation. We prefer to use abstract classes over rights. Okay, over rights. This one. Second case, sir, you want to use, you want to call your scalar code from Java code. You, you know that we can call Java code in Scala. Sometimes people might call that uh, Java code in uh, sorry, Scala code in Java. Get my point. We can also call Scala code in Java. In that situation, we prefer to use which one? We might prefer to use a abstract classes. Might be you can ask me a question. Why don't we use that trites in Java? There are abstract classes in Java, so the same abstract classes we have in Scala. So migration becomes easy for us. But we don't have trites in Java, we have interfaces. So that way, in that way, Compatibility becomes difficult if you prefer interfaces over abstract classes. Okay, you got my point here. Understood, no? So that's why why we prefer abstract classes. So that the same similar abstract classes are there in Java as well. So that uh, interoperative interoperability is there between these two there. But the other point is, rights are not there in Java. We have interfaces. Now the Scala rights, if you want to directly use in Java, it's not possible because we don't have rights in Java. So that's why we prefer abstract class over right here. You got my point here. So these are the two cases where we need abstract classes. Other than that, uh, we prefer to use sprites in Scala, but not abstract classes. And other things, whatever that is discussed in the talk, that is almost known to you. That is already done by us. We have done it tested the yesterday session. I don't think we have a gap here. Sprites are similar, but not exactly same. We don't need to, even now, of course, when you go to the Java 8, Java 8 interfaces and uh, now the sprites concept are same, almost similar. But there are some differences again. 
there are few differences okay let's let's not uh, bring in that because if i bring in java again some but some of you might get confused so I, i'm only just only trying to what is that correlate whichever is compatible here whichever is not then we can ignore it so there is nothing harm here so that we need to understand everything from java when you are learning in scala but the point is as these two are very much interconnected it is good to know if you don't know nothing happens sir there is no harm in that maybe you don't need to worry about that but if you are having idea about both it's fine because both are connected very much here they are interconnected they are very much here because you know we can use almost all the apis of java in scala even the scala apis we can use in java so that as there is interoperability between these two it's like giving and taking you go you give chocolate i i give biscuit something like that this is the understanding what java and uh, scala has here when that coordination is there then development becomes much more easy for but developer okay got this point right anyhow uh, i am just talking here what well, other another one more case here is uh, when should we go for abstract class then trites means uh, the first case you know right when you need uh, parameters with the constructor when you need a that's one because the trites don't allow parameterized constructors you cannot declare constructor parameters with trites so in such case definitely we go for abstract class the second case is clearly explained we don't need to care about that okay we have discussed that clearly okay so if you see how do you declare trite means like this anyhow our next topic is that in place of class we have to use trite keyword that's all these are also similar to classes you don't need to think these are something different no we already know uh, trites here only thing is we just need to understand that the difference between classes and trites here the, the way we declare and the methods in the trites everything is similar to classes but with some changes that we will discuss you got it right sir that's all about this thing so the, this is one case where we prefer abstract classes over trites that is one thing because trites doesn't allow parameters constructor parameters are parameter is constructor we prefer abstract class over trites here in in this scenario second scenario when you want to call a scala code from java that is also one more scenario where we prefer that we do that by doing imports all that sir we don't need to worry about it okay how do you do that is not immediate uh, this thing discussion point okay now abstract class syntax anyhow we know that we had discussed yesterday we have seen this yesterday all the scenarios were completely discussed with okay you can see that everything is completely discussed by looking at that you can easily understand about abstract classes even suppose you can see if you want uh, you can directly print parameters of abstract class in the method of abstract class itself concrete method of abstract class itself you can see here i keep i keep discussing or i keep uh, bringing this 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 technical terms here concrete and uh, abstract you remember right now even here if you see the people are you see some names here concrete implementation means this class this method is a concrete method abstract method means without uh, body concrete means with body like that body right so that's idea about this uh, abstract classes when and where we use abstract classes means these are the two scenarios but still which one we prefer to use in uh, scala is it abstract classes or is it trites which are the which is most used thing in uh, this thing here in scala what's your answer what's your answer sir so you don't want to answer Okay, my mistake. I should select down here. That's fine. 
<clears throat> so we, we got the abstract class thing here. I just add even this these two things here so that uh, it will be clear for documentation. So these are the two scenarios uh, where we prefer abstract classes. Fine, right? Anyhow, that is uh, discussed uh, in detail in yesterday's session. So I don't want to again uh, go to that discussion now. Now I'm switching to the next topic. Okay, what is that topic? Uh, all this is discussed. We don't have anything missing here. That was a good discussion yesterday. Now Scala tried. What is this? Okay. When you talk about Scala tried. Okay, and talk about Scala trite. Now the question is, what is a trite? Now by now you know what is an abstract class, what is an abstract method, and where should we override that abstract method? As you know, all that understanding trite is just a matter of minutes. If you want to just quickly understand trites for us with the yesterday's discussion, if you are very clear yesterday, today. We can just understand trites hardly in 15 to 20 minutes. You don't need much time just to get some quick idea. Later on, you can get into the pros and cons, like you know, uh, the uh, different concepts which are applied on trites and uh, different use cases where we prefer to use trites. That is a different story. But just to understand trite, I'll just quickly explain this here. Now, this is abstract. Now, see, similar things are applicable for trites. Same points are applicable. Same in sense, almost same points. Few changes. What is that first thing? If you see, it is also similar to abstract class, but we use here instead of class or abstract keyword to declare a trite, we use a keyword called trite. Can you see that? Second thing, a trite can have both concrete methods and abstract methods. Third thing, if we cannot declare parameterized constructor with the trites. Okay. And of course, you remove this too. Okay, we cannot declare parameterized constructor with the trite. But you know, folks, a trite can have concrete methods and abstract methods. You get this point. So point one, we use the keyword try to declare try. Point two, it can have both concrete and abstract methods. Point three, no parameterized constructor here. Got it right. Point four, if you have abstract methods, where should we override that abstract method in the immediate subcase? And then how do you extend try to a subclass? How do you inherit? Even try to acts as a superclass. But there is difference between trites and uh, classes. We'll talk about point by point. So you say extends. What is this, sir? Extends a one. Now same keyword we use to extend trite to a subclass. You don't need these parameters here because we didn't declare them. But still, it works. Sir, you are following. And uh, once you extend a trite to a subclass, we must override abstract method of trite in the subclass. Suppose you remove this. <coughs> now what happens immediately? You have to see an error. One minute. You, this even we should remove all this also. Can you see that? It is showing an error. Why? This is an abstract why we had a discussion, very clear discussion yesterday. If your parent has a, an abstract method, like it might be an abstract class, it might be a triad, and you are inheriting such parents to a subclass, then subclass must override all the abstract method of this triad or abstract classes. Otherwise, the subclass also has to be declared as abstract. 
even the subclass has to be declared as abstract sir login so means what should i do sir of course i should override this abstract method of try in the sub then all is well otherwise all is not well sir all is hell otherwise if you don't override okay else you have to declare subclass also as a other other alternative for us other choice are you good sir so you are good here yeah? now another point can i create an object for a trait that is the next question you can answer this question because with the experience what we have yesterday we you can answer this question yes or no please confirm it sir give me an answer yes no not applicable can we create an object for a trait can we create an object for a trait yes no or these are the two answers either we can create nor we can we cannot create. perfect we cannot create object for trait we can just quickly test it sir cross test it here you can see var space sum a equal to new a or a1 if it is a1 a1 immediately we have an error here see here it is showing an error what is that error trait a1 is abstract cannot be it's clearly saying see sir even traits are abstract it is clearly saying trait a1 is abstract cannot be instantiated we had a discussion yesterday if you have unimplemented methods in a class or trait such classes are partially implemented classes they were not fully implemented classes and for such classes you cannot create objects like i told you example of marriage and the job example if you get job then you get married if you don't have job you are not married because without job you are abstract partially implemented with job you are fully implemented then girl also will accept to marry same thing applicable for trait sums after seeing all this you might be confused are yaar this seems like a completely abstract class then why do we have trait here sir correct this is a question probably anybody will ask this question for this you don't need to be intelligent if you understand it properly this question comes from everyone then what is the answer it's not my answer because i am not that uh, developer of uh, creator of uh, scala or java they have given some answer for this yes there is difference between trait and abstract abstract classes when see if it is a class we had a discussion of one point if it is a class what is that we cannot implement multiple inheritance with classes is it discussed right can we implement multiple inheritance with classes sir that's not possible but with traits it's possible sir you can go for multiple inheritance with traits i think i, I just uh, you know I like at this point at the time of that discussion i told this point sir you remember right so one difference between traits and abstract classes is uh, we can go for multiple inheritance with traits whereas it's not possible to go for multiple inheritance with classes even with abstract classes that is one basic difference. okay that is one of the very important and we'll see few more differences that is called applying some mixings what we call here technically no issues so but after looking at at this most of the concept now i told you right 10 15 to 20 minutes with within 20 minutes i have finished rights topics sir this is a quick idea about rights we got a, a quick idea i hope now you see that uh, right the concept is this but we have to see more differences now once you get a good idea of that okay try to similar to abstract class the keyword difference is there and also what what else, what else sir? but other things are almost similar we can have concrete and abstract methods we should override same abstract method in subclass if you don't do that in subclass subclass has to be abstract 
and we cannot create object for trite as well, similar to abstract cases. And what else, sir? The difference, exact difference is uh, we can go for multiple inheritance with trites. It's not possible with the classes. So in most of the cases, that's why Scala people tells trites are more powerful than abstract classes. So in very few cases, Scala people depend on abstract classes. In most of the cases, Scala prefer to use strides. And anyhow, loose coupling is applied wherever inher inheritance is there. That is fine. Wherever you have inheritance, you can apply loose coupling. What is loose coupling? A superclass reference referring to a subclass object. This is one beautiful concept. Remember, sir. Okay, now let us add all these points because when I discuss more, there is too much information to carry on your mind. Okay, so if I make some points in the notepad, then what happens automatically? Your all these points gets properly registered in the subconscious mind. Okay, now it will at present it is in the conscious brain. Right. So what should I do now? Let's just finally test it. So. What should I should I create object for B1 or not? Obviously, I have no other choice. I should create object for B1, sir. What should I do now? So bar space B equal to what is that? New B B1. So then B dot M1, B dot M2, B dot Just run this sir now. When you look at yesterday's program and today's program, except this keyword change, you don't find big differences here. You don't find much difference here, correct? But there are differences we'll discuss. Now finally, run this. We got the output here, perfect. Same as how we got yesterday. The difference, one difference we, we clearly discussed here is we cannot declare parameterized constructor with trites which is possible with abstract this is point one point two if you want to use scala code in java then more than trites we prefer abstract classes because we don't have trites in java interfaces are there instead of trites that's why that that will be a compatibility issue but you know one thing even trites are interfaces when you compile these traits again, they get converted to interfaces. Got it, right? So we will add those points now. So finally, what is a try? By now, first, after understanding this program and the discussion, okay, after listening to all this, observing all this, you can easily now add points to the notepad. First one. You know, I would have been adding the same, which is copied from websites, but you know. When, when we type and we just try to uh, again uh, recollect point by point, uh, then the clarity of uh, every everything will be much more better for us. Okay, that's why I'm doing this. You don't don't think I'm wasting your time. So now what is a trite here? Trite is a similar to similar to class or interface, sir. Answer. A trite is similar to interface or class, sir. Similar to interface in Java. Second thing, how do you declare trite, sir? We use keyword. What is that keyword? Trite to declare trites in Scala. Next one, third, third point. What what will be there in trites, sir? What do what do we have in trites? Only abstract methods, abstract methods and concrete methods. What what can we have in trites? Answer. Both yes, a trite can have both concrete and abstract methods. And it's optional. If you want, you can have concrete. If you want, you can have abstract. If you if you want, you can have both. It's up to you, sir. 
it's not mandatory to have both concrete both abstract okay or it's not mandatory you can have any one even if you don't have anything also still try this right that's all if you don't put anything in the right see here remove all this this becomes an empty right but this is there is no we don't have much of use with empty rights okay right so that is another important next another point we can have both concrete and abstract methods in a right what else sir what else we have discussed how do you inherit a right to a subclass how do you inherit sir by using extends we don't have any other keyword like in java sir in java to inherit classes they use extends to inherit interfaces they use implements but in scala we don't have two sir we just have only one no confusion okay so we use extends we use extends to inherit a right to a class okay next one after that what else sir suppose if tried has abstract methods you know what is an abstract method right they are just method signatures method prototypes without any body suppose tried have abstract methods where should we override abstract method of tried where we must override abstract method of tried come on sir where shall we override we override abstract method of tried sir in subclass otherwise what sir otherwise if you don't do that right has abstract method you extend it to a subclass then you are not overriding then what is that we should do otherwise even subclass must be declared even subclass must be declared what sir subclass must be declared abstract okay yes sir sir another question see now you don't need to read again next question sir can we create an object for uh, tried sir is it possible to create object for tried no so we cannot instanti instantiate it means instantiate means what sir just creating objects we cannot instantiate the objects no objects okay yeah see but we are not done with this sir don't think almost the same points are applicable for abstract classes i told you one more point right excuse me sir these are similarities between abstract class and rights what is the other difference two more differences we can add immediately what is that number one we cannot declare a right with what sir parameterized constructor we cannot declare a right with the parameterized constructor also one more possibility with rights which is not possible with the abstract classes yes somebody you are no giving me quick answers i am very happy for that we can implement multiple inheritance with rights which is not possible with classes so we can implement multiple inheritance with rights okay what it writes sir so this is idea about right class till let us you know first we will add a few we'll see three to four use cases first use case one is this this is the basic one please test it sir then we go for use case two what is that use case two multiple inheritance with rights they are also called as mixins mixins I, i will talk about it afterwards. then after that we will see one more loose coupling with rights that is very important to know okay then that gives you a perfect idea 
these three use cases will do today if time permits. Okay. First, you test this uh, the basic code, sir. Please check, test this basic code. See what we are we are doing it right, sir. We are straight away jumping to understand the concept from program, and from that we are backtracking the theory. That's what we are doing, so that you you can quickly get to the point. Right, it got it right, sir. And also, it's an effective for you also, sir. You can easily remember things when you look at it program and when you try to understand. Okay, so please test this first example, sir. These are all very basic things. These are all more or less. Uh, these are the concepts, sir. Yeah, thank you, Srikant. If it is helping you, that's really happy for me as well. So please test it. Today's session is a wonderful session, sir, because I know when it is a blockbuster, when it is a hit, when it is an average, as a teacher, I know. Is it done, sir? Okay. Uh, okay, we will take case two. Case two is uh, like applying multiple inheritance with tribes. And that is also called mixing. Technically, we can call it as uh, something like uh, mixing, M I X I N. Multiple tribes in a class, that is what it is. Uh, Mixing means uh, mixing both class and uh, tribe type of thing. Yeah, correct. We will see that that is the third case. We'll take it. We'll come to that at the third thing, third level. This is simple, sir. From here onwards, there is nothing. Just changing that and this and that and this. Because now you know what is uh, about classes. You are good with classes. You are good with tribes, and you are good with abstract classes. You are good with all these fundamental things. So these are concepts. Just, you know, just we need to play with them. That's all. Let us play case to use case two. We are done with use case one. 
uh, just testing a simple trait that is use case one. And then use case two, multiple inheritance with traits are implementing multiple traits in a class. Use case two. What is it, sir? Implementing. Implementing. Multiple. Yeah, we will do it, uh, Sandy. Not not this time. We will take it as a separate session to debug because we will again the disturb the flow gets disturbed here. Okay. <clears throat> Implementing. multiple inheritance with the so i think uh, it's not mixing mixing means we have both classes and this uh, class and uh, traits together we inherit that is the mixing okay just mixture of both yeah how do you do that take let's take a simple example <coughs> excuse me you don't need this many methods again just uh, remove one or two methods here if you want, you can add abstract method or you can completely remove it, sir. It's up to you. Okay. Now this is trait one. I take one more trait. I'm removing class here and I'm just taking one more trait. Now, trait A1, trait B1. And you just make this as true, sir. We'll, we'll, we'll just play play with like if we have same methods might be if you have questions don't we have ambiguity here don't we have a deadly diamond problem here if you are asking such questions sir, we will test it case by case just let's play point you know case by case for now what we are trying to understand multiple traits we are trying to inherit in one class now i have two types if you want you can declare abstract methods in in, in all the traits so here and here in both the cases Okay, if you want, you can have abstract classes, or if you want, you can have concrete classes. It's up to you, sir. Suppose I just take. Usually, we prefer traits to have abstract classes also. Okay, I'm just taking a simple example. I have one abstract method in trait one. Maybe if you want, you can have one more abstract method in trait two. And if if you want, you can add concrete methods as well. It's up to you, sir. Now, how do you? Inherit these two traits to a subclass. Take some uh, class, okay? Some AB here. I'm just making it as AB. My subclass is AB. And uh, you say extends. The first keyword should be always extends. And just say A1. Now I have extended right A1 here. Now I should extend second one. What should I do now? If I should extend B1, then I cannot again say extends i cannot use extends here or either i cannot apply b1 comma here i cannot apply comma with the with this one here then what should i do for the first time when you have when you try to implement multiple traits in a subclass while extending the first one while inheriting the first one use extends keyword from there onwards apply with keyword got it right Suppose I want to extend one more, inherit one more. Then, then what should you do? You have to apply one more with. Suppose I want to inherit one more, one more with. Got it right? That's all. Simple. Is it clear now? So this is how we should inherit multiple traits to a subclass. Got it? Let us just try with here directly instead of first one like using extends. Let us have with here immediate it's giving left and right. So what should I do? Don't play games. So put extends. Got it right? So finally, what should I do now? Still our responsibility is there. What is our responsibility? We must now there is another responsibility. We must overwrite these two abstract methods. Put your cursor here. Can you see that, sir? You can see it's clearly saying you have two unimplemented methods, just implement them. So, what should I do now? Simply copy the signature, copy the signature, paste it here. Okay, and then 
just get them done. Okay, now that's all sir. Just say hello. Similarly, one more. Override the second one. The rest of this story is not you, sir. Screenplay, story, direction, everything is not you except this. Now you know you are director for your own program. Because you know all the things which you have to apply to this. Now we have extended implemented uh, both the abstract methods in the subclass, which have extended this uh, this rights here. So finally, what should I do now? I should create an object for the subclass. How do I create var space uh, sub a b equal to new a? You don't need to follow rhyming, sir. I just only following some standard that sir can give any name for this reference variable. Okay. Now what should I do, sir? A B dot A B dot M1 and then A B dot M2. Okay, now run this program. You got hello, hello. Okay, of course. Make it as a type. Now you can see here, sir. Can you see that, sir? So this is case two. What we are doing here, we are trying to extend uh, multiple tries to a subclass. And how do you do that? We, we use both extends and with keyword, but we can use extends at most for one time, but with keyword can be used a number of times. Okay. So for first time, always we should use extends. From there onwards, we have to apply with what it writes there. So this is case two. Got it right there. Clear, sir? Please test this use case. So this is you can you can treat this as multiple inheritance with rights. This is multiple inheritance with the rights. Probably, see, we have almost reached uh, the end of OOP, sir. We are almost reached this. After trades, I don't think we have many more topics from uh, OOP. The next topic is exception handling. Then after that, I would like to switch to collections. One, one of my favorite topic, both in Java and uh, Scala, and even in Python also. This, uh, this is collection is the most favorite topic. So if you if you can play with collections, your Spark journey will be much more uh, interesting. Threads we will do after that, Sandeep. Because threads are not that important now. Collections are important. Threads we can we can do it. We are not going to leave them. So finish testing, please confirm. Someone confirm here.
Okay, right. So case three. Suppose I have two methods with the same signatures and uh, concrete methods. And I have one more concrete method here. If both has same logic, it is fine, sir. Case three. I'm going to ask a quick question. Use case three. Okay. Now we don't need to override. If at all, if you do this, you should apply override keyword here. Okay. And I told you when you override uh, concrete methods, then we must apply override keyword. But if you override abstract method, we don't need to use override keyword. This is clearly explained yesterday and today also. Okay. Leave this aside. We will come to this again to the subjects. Let's get, let's uh, have some print statement here so say some color here okay let's have one more print statement here say some i okay. right sir now you are extending it to subclass now you are calling m1 but i don't see any error or if you see here one minute one minute i'm sorry it should be m1 right if, I, if it is M2, there is no issue at all. If you have M1 and M2 in A1 and B2, B1, there is no ambiguity with the subclass. But when methods are same in trite A1 and trite B1, then here we see an error. Yes, even for this, it is showing an error. Let us just try to read the error first. What is the error? <clears throat> this cannot be resolved by de declaring, uh, this can be, sorry what they were saying this is uh, they were they were giving some hint for us when you have similar methods same methods <coughs> both in uh, trite one and trite two and they were saying that to solve this problem by overriding that in the subclass because uh, what we can do we can do one thing we can resolve this like this when you have two methods like this, probably both in the, both in the both parents, we can override the second one. So like, you know, override, because already M1 has same logic, you don't need to use same logic in subclass. So what we, what we can do, we don't need same from B1. Then what we can do, at least we can change B1 and uh, make sure it is usable like that. So what is that DEF M1? Polar unit. Now you see this. This issue is solved. What is that? Uh, now here you can provide a common implementation for this too. You can provide a common implementation. That is one thing. Otherwise, you can change the implementation. Suppose you want to keep this implementation one in a trite a one as is. And you want to modify the implementation two of v1 then you can just make a modification or still if you want to same make it same i hope we can have the same implementation in the subclass now we don't have issue so the method of uh, trite one is is intact it is not modified method of trite two is also intact but only difference is <coughs> we override it this and then make make a and uh, the same business logic is implemented in the subclass. And this is one solution proposed by Scala people. When you have same methods, both in, uh, you know, this parent uh, classes, this rights A1 and B1, then one thing is we get a compilation error, no doubt about that. Then the solution they were giving is override this M1 method and uh, that will resolve the issue of uh, conflict here. So that now what happens, one will be inherited from A1, the other one will be overridden. So the issue is solved here. We don't have any ambiguity. Got it right. This is the solution proposed by Scala people, not by, by me or anyone. Else. The <coughs> API itself is telling that the intelligence means it is coming from API. It is the, the rule is given by the Scala people itself. Got it right, sir. Understood. 
Suppose if these are abstract methods, but other other things are fine, sir. We don't have an issue. Now, if I call M1, another question to you. If I call M1, which M1 is called? The one from right A1, the one from right B1, which is called? Next question for you. Answer, sir. Which one is called here, sir? Answer. I'm calling M1 on the subclass. Output from which one is called here? The one from B1, the one from A1. A1 followed by B1, not possible. Only one method is called. It's not possible, sir. Is it coming from B1 or is it coming from A1? It's a simple, simple thing, sir. You don't need to look at the traits here. You have overridden that method. When you override, we have clearly discussed. Then overriding happens based on object. Whose object is this subclass? The method from subclass is called. What is the method from subclass? Method from subclass is nothing but a M1, which is implemented with high. Then we get this only high only. We don't get the hello. Then you can ask me a question. What is that even there is no question here? Even if I try to do some this kind of uh, I try to do some convincing uh, act here. Like suppose I make this reference as uh, suppose let's make it as the A1 here. You can see right. This is possible in in uh, programming in in object oriented programming. A superclass reference can refer to a subclass object. We had a, a, a detailed discussion on that, right? <clears throat> now, if this is the case, now what I am trying to do is uh, like this. I am just trying to check. Now, my hope is, do I get M1 from A, A1 here? Does M1 from A1 is called? I want to just see that. But as for the rule of overriding, object result in here, <coughs> excuse me, sir. Overriding happens based on object, not based on reference. Even though reference is belongs to A1, object belongs to AB. So the method from AB has to be always called. That is the rules. Okay. So let's just try to run it. You get I only. Can you see that? You get I, not a L1. So finally, this is conclusion for case three. When you have same methods in both the in two parent uh, into in parent traits or super class traits then when you extend them to subclass inherited to subclass both at a time then what we have to do we get a compilation error to resolve that the solution proposed by scala people is override that m1 whichever is necessary for you and implement business logic as per the requirement not every time we need both the methods. But it right time. But you can ask, suppose I need a business logic from uh, from A1 also, sir. Then you have to do what? Declare them as abstract and override as per the business requirements. And also, this is applicable only when you have a, one implementation for any one of these two methods, M1 in A1 or M1 in B1. If you want two different implementations, declare two different uh, methods. Got it, right? This is a simple idea here. So that's about this set, case three. Now case four, finally, the last case here. Probably we are almost reaching the end of uh, trites also. So use case three. Is this case three clear to all of you, sir? Yes, based on object created. Definitely in overriding, object is the very important thing to observe. Okay. Right. Next one. Case four. Mixins. What is that we are going for, sir? Mixins. I think uh, we will do it tomorrow, sir, because uh, already 
it's almost 9, 9 10.30. So we'll stop this here Pro and we'll meet on Monday as usual. Uh, if you have time tomorrow, maybe we can plan one hour uh, in the afternoon. So it's up to you, sir. Probably, okay, let's let's wait for, uh, we do one thing. Let's wait for two more weeks. After that, my Python will be closed so that we can plan it as per our convenience. Okay, sir, we'll meet on Monday. So, but now I think you are good with, uh, you are good with abstract classes, the differences, all that is fine, right, sir? Okay, folks. So, we'll meet uh, Monday and we'll close strikes. Probably we'll switch to the exception handling. That is another topic. Then I will switch to collections. Because sometimes you might face some exceptions in collections. Just to give you more insight about exceptions as well. Because in a, in a real time code, without having try and catch, you don't write any code. Got it? Huh? So, definitely we have to learn that and then push to, switch to collections. Next week is from next week, uh, we, we are going to learn more interesting and uh, the more deeper concepts of uh, this uh, scale. Good night, sir.